October 2020. We're here to prove our terminal ballistics at range using copper projectiles that were field tested last year in Texas during a deer hunt. By the way, thank you Boo for that amazing opportunity. Our intent is to show that a modern pneumatic sporting device can be an efficient and ethical means to harvest an animal at extended range. As you can see, the scenery here is just simply amazing. We spent the better part of day one setting up an area to test under common field conditions. This proved to be a great challenge that we gladly accepted. The weather was forecast to be mild with a slight breeze and a wonderful fall chill, so we thought. Hey guys, just going to give you a quick view of our setup here and what it looks like up here on the hilltop. Some of our equipment, we got our brand new SIG range finder, we got a nice Vortex Razor spot and scope we're going to mount a camera to so you can see the action. Um, when everybody shows up here in the crew, we've stayed back far enough that we're not going to disturb the elk so everybody can get in on it. And uh, why don't you come on over this way and we'll show you what we're looking at here. So as you can see, we're going to be shooting down into the bottom of the canyon, down into there. We invited the crew up to celebrate the successful testing at range. Sadly though, not everyone was able to make the trip up. We handed Chris a camera and told her to go wild getting images of the crew. The day was going great and it got even better when we noticed an elk on the opposite ridge across the valley. We took some shots of the ridge line with the camera and also got a rangefinder on it just to check for the distance. The elk was just out of range for a shot. It's a small window of opportunity, but it's still an opportunity. The crew decided to camp out with us for the night, but if you notice, there are no tents. We had spent the rest of the day in waiting, hoping that the elk would get closer and in a line of sight. Now the real test begins. So this is uh, 2020, our our October adventure for elk. Uh, recap a little from last year. We got an elk, two moose, was something that we called the Franken gun. It was the original prototype of our technology. Worked very, very well. This year, we're trying for an elk at 300 yards plus. 
and we're doing it with a solid copper projectile that we manufactured ourselves, in fact, a few days ago. I don't know if I mentioned, this is day four of this activity. With the horizontal rain, the 30 mile an hour winds, you know, we haven't even taken a shot yet. But what we have is a pretty unique situation where we have elk coming into a farmer's clearings. Now, the elk are eating them out of house and home. So you could call this a management harvest. We're sitting on a hilltop. We'll give you the exact range when we actually take the shot, but it is at a very steep downhill or angle. So that offers a little more challenge. Our goal is to have a clean harvest in excess of 300 yards with our technology that we're working on now. Now, we're not going to show you this technology. We're going to cover it up with cardboard. Consider this a like the monster in the closet in a horror movie. Nobody really gets to see him till the end. We have nine patents pending this year on this technology. We're not going to release the technology until the patents are worked through and until we get some more stuff refined. But we are going to let you enjoy the process that we're going through as we develop this technology. Nick and I have been working very hard over the last year. The crew is here. You'll probably get to see pictures of the crew. And just in case you're wondering why he's downhill from me, it's because he's so much taller than I am. We had to kind of level this out a little bit. <laughs> so uh, the shot will be taken by one of our crew members because, you know, you're part of the team. You're part of the dream. And AGA is definitely a team. And we'll, as we get into this a little farther, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of our challenges in getting this done. And in fact, the young man that's going to take the shot is the same young man that manufactured the bullets on our CNC. Now, these are not bore riders. These are actual 458 diameter copper projectiles. No lead, copper. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how this technology works out for us. So stay tuned here in the next few minutes or over the next couple of days. We're going to keep adding to this and uh, see where Here's Jeannie. She is the one who takes and handles the orders. Don't get too close though, she bites. Here we got JP, our quality control expert. Don't let the glasses fool you, he has a keen eye. Jake is right there behind him watching the ridge line. We got Nathaniel, our lead programmer, waiting patiently in the truck bed. And here's John, our cameraman, trying to explain the camera shots we need to get. JP here is double checking the expected weather conditions while Jeannie is prepping the film. Here's Gail, the pastor and bookkeeper, doing what she can do to offer support to the crew. And the wait continues. Here's Nick trying to get a better outlook on life by cleaning his binoculars before the weather starts to set in again. The crew works tirelessly preparing for when the elk gets into view. Lastly, we have Master Yoda, expressing his concerns over getting the shot on camera. And the search continues, but tomorrow is another day. Here we are, day five. Note to scruff. <laughs> yeah, lacking a shower and a shave. Sitting in the truck, temperatures dropped 41 degrees. Take a look out there, the rain, uh, the fog. Wind, let's not forget the wind. We're expecting a break in the weather very soon, we hope. Uh, then we're expecting 35 mile an hour winds. This is the last day of this adventure. We've got some good video of elk in an area that we can't shoot, of course, hanging out, being like all friendly and stuff. Uh, we, we have gotten a couple of opportunities, but we're really pushing the envelope here. 
and so we've really got to make this right and whatever do we've got to get on camera uh, so we're just kind of giving you the intro to day five to let you know what we're up to and if we get a break we're gonna get on it Alright guys, we have been able to take a few shots uh, when the elk weren't around and um, with the weather and all the wind, oh my goodness, just about every possible thing that could come against us has come against us. Would you agree? Yeah. But well, we got a fire. I haven't seen a tornado yet. A or a grizzly. Or a grizzly. Still young. Or a grizzly. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had a full, full day yet. We have seen some sign, but we haven't seen the actual grizzly yet. So we're a little farther in day five. Let's see what happens. Give it a minute or two and we'll get it. Woo! So we're out here on this uh, Elk adventure. Adventure, yes. In the rain, day five. We'll kind of carry on. And it dawned on us we didn't do the recap from last year's adventures. So we came out in the same area and we harvested the elk uh, with uh, one of the crew, Jacob, who has gone on to an amazing job at a firearms company. So he's actually not out here this year. But best wishes to the Jacob. Well, after we harvested the elk out here with Jacob with Airgun Adventure, Nick and his dad, <laughs> the oldest team member, uh, went out uh, moose hunting. Yeah, and uh, I made a boo-boo. I decided to go on my own with my dad. We're going to hunt. I'm going to run the cameras. He's going to run cameras. And uh, that way I don't have to... Uh, shut down the whole plant and have extra crew. Boy, was that a mistake. Because one, my dad... Doesn't can't. listen. Yeah, he doesn't listen to instruction <laughs> at all. <laughs> Let's not sugarcoat it, Dad. You don't listen. I guess you're 80, you don't have to. And uh, I'm a lousy cameraman. I admit it. I have problems with cameras. And falling through the ice. Yeah, well... We had great video at one point, and I had all the cameras in the side-by-side -side with tracks, and I had my GoPros mounted on the front bumper, so we were getting really cool footage on our way in to retrieve Dad's moose, and uh, I decided to take a three-mile shortcut across a frozen beaver pond in 11-degree weather, and uh, we put the side-by-side -side through the ice into the beaver pond. I was able to get out safely. The machine was able to get out under its own power, which is an amazing statement for tracks. But cameras, camera gear, all lost, damaged, or <clears throat> let's just say they're lost. So that's the reason why, when you looked at our stuff from last year, you saw some still pictures of the of the gentleman with with the moose. And Here's the phone call I get back at the shop. It goes something like this. It's like, hey, Carl, we got a moose. I said, great. He goes, well, I sunk. I kind of played submarine. We have no video. Um, and Dad didn't listen. I said, so what happened? He goes, well, we got this really nice moose out there. She's at about 98 yards or so. I'm telling Dad, look, we got to sneak up on it. We need some video. i got I got to recover from the loss. Dad looks at him and says, why? Poof drops yeah. um, no video excellent moose no video before I could even get the cameras out of the case let alone turned on and focused she was down um, it was a great shot it was a great shot amazing for a man that age at that distance and that temperature with an air gun I mean you can't ask for better except for gun cameras <laughs> yeah, I'm Phil. and a dedicated cameraman so on this adventure, you will notice I have binoculars, but I'm not allowed to touch a camera 
under any circumstances. Am I? No. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of the crew up here, and you'll see snippets of this throughout as, as we're going to document this elk adventure. And uh, it's it's because we want to try and get some good footage for, for you folks at home. You got your moose, which is the first moose ever in the yep. state of Idaho. Um, give or take 60 yards ish or so that was a year ago i may not remember the exact number but you got it one and done yeah and that was a double pass through low it was awesome uh dad's was a double long uh like i said we couldn't ask for better except for video um on our to-do list is to buy much better all-weather gear <laughs> and uh You'll probably see when we get this all done and edited how many times we've changed clothes from the rain and the wet today, but it's uh... That's why they call it hunting. It's better than a real job. It is better than a real job. The rain's big enough too. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll see how this goes, but a recap from last year. First, elk legally harvested with an air modern pneumatic sporting, sporting device. device in the state of Idaho. First two Moose harvested, verified by the Idaho Fish, Fish and Wildlife. And, wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. and as near as we can tell, it's the first two legal moose taken in the U.S. anywhere. Well, yeah, I don't know about that, but, but we'll see. It's it's amazing, and it's uh, proving that uh, there's a huge difference between an air gun and a modern pneumatic rifle. Shooting copper jacketed bullets, normal hunting bullets or solids. Yeah. No bore riders, no gimmicks, no nonsense. Just a sporting arm for sporting activities. So we've got a fire going here. You can see it's wet. We're midday, day five. We can't get the elk to come in any closer. They're ranging between 350 and 365 yards. The difficulty we're having is, is with the heavy rain and stuff, our drops are a little more than we had anticipated so we're doing some calculations and let's see how it goes okay day five around noon we've uh, kind of had a bit of good luck here we got John here He's got the spotting scope. We have found an elk on the other ridge. Now the other ridge is range finding out at 342 yards. You can see it in our spotting scope that we'll use to record the shot. I'll look over the spotting scope so you can kind of see the ridge that we're looking at. Now this ridge, got a lot of pictures of this ridge over here, but we're really, really happy to get a, a shot that's not down at 31 degree angle and um, here's the guys getting set up and see our fire over there they're all getting ready to go uh, let's see how it goes Okay guys, how'd we do? Shot, walked 15 yards, laid down, head is on the ground. I think we did it. I think we got it! <laughs> yeah! Out of board! What was the range? 342 for the first shot. Awesome. And you guys can see the wind hasn't quit, the clouds haven't quit. 342 yards. Now it's time to let it sit and do the recovery.
All right, guys, you got the elk down. It was originally 342. Where it's laying now, what does it range? 349. 349 even? Okay, let's see the range finder. I can't see it like that. Wow, I'm doing a horrible job. 349, there you are. Okay, you can have the range finder back. How many yards? 349. <laughs> Heck yeah. With Kay. an air rifle. With copper bullets. Yeah. <laughs> real bullets for real results. Okay, yeah. now we're pretty excited, and you know what? It's our video, so we're going to drag this out. What we're doing is we're setting up the spotting scopes again. We're going to get our eyes on her and keep our eyes on her, and we're going to try and get some stills. Okay, ready? All right, we're donning some orange so that we can sit here and try and video them going up the hill to recover the elk. Nathaniel, the shooter's got some uh, of our special solid copper bullets. Nick here is just like a proud dad. And uh, we're, we're going to see what happens now. Team AGA. Uh, modern pneumatic sporting devices, guys. Modern pneumatic sporting devices. I wanted to take a minute here to talk about uh, part of the excitement of what's going on. It isn't just the fact that we, with one shot, harvested an elk at 349 yards out of a modern pneumatic sporting rifle. Believe me, celebrations are going to go on for a very, very long time. Whether or not that's a record or not, I don't know. What's really important to me is the fact that the people that were involved in this actually made the product. So the young man who took the shot actually machined the bullets. He did the engineering drawings. He, in combination with the other young man that was here, actually manufactured the prototype parts for this. It's a team effort. Hunting and activities and sporting used to be family. It used to be about camaraderie. We want to bring that back. And we're trying to do that by building teams and success. Modern pneumatic sporting rifles. It's a whole new way of hunting. It's a whole new sport. It works. It's successful. 349 yards y'all can't see the walrus behind me aka nick who's who's on the camera because the young men are down there trying to harvest whoops back that up trying to retrieve their harvest you know what faux pas are okay i am bloody excited awesome day cold it's about 52 degrees out here right now we've got a break in the weather when you took the shot which you didn't see in the camera i actually had a plastic tarp set up behind me to try and block the wind so the shooter wasn't moving in the gust of wind and to keep the rain off of it and to keep the rain this is all kinds of challenges everything working against us you know what god is good and this worked right. me to your right That must be thicker than it looks from over here. Okay, Nathaniel, don't go uphill, Nathaniel. If you can, just head towards the power lines. I should have said that so that we're still Because when you're in those heavy trees, going uphill, downhill, it's hard to see. Oh yeah, it just looks like they're right there. Yes, it's like, hey, you know what? It's right there, dude. And I can see the elk, I can see them. I don't know why they don't see it. Because you could hide an infantry division between them and them. Yeah, you could hide an infantry division over on that hillside. That's thick stuff. So this is cool. Here we are. There's the young men going after the elk.
Remember, this was filmed to show our technological capabilities through thoughtful design. The successful and humane harvest is the product of our successful testing. We here at AGA do not condone or suggest the unethical taking of animals at any time, under any circumstances. Modern pneumatic sporting rifles uses a proprietary technology. Thank you.